All right, hello everyone. My name is Katie Vogel and I work as the public historian at Henry Street Settlement. And I'm so happy to be talking with Antoinette Truglio Martin today, who is the author of a book called The Dreams of Singers and Sluggers. It came out just a few months ago in fall of 2021. And it's a book that is for young adults, but I know that adults will enjoy it as well as I did. I really love this book and I'm looking forward to talking with Antoinette. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And I will just mention from the beginning that I'm in the dining room right now at Henry Street Settlement and yes. some scenes from Antoinette's book are set in the dining room. So we will talk a little bit about that, of course. That's great. Yes, very good. And, <laughs> and what do you have behind you, Antoinette? I have my main character, Lily Taglia, her little cutout. And um, my uh, cover art illustrator was uh, so wonderful. And we, we got this cutout made. Um, so she, she comes with me on my little events. Excellent. Uh, she is uh, nine years old, almost 10, in The Dreams of Singers and Sluggers. So she is a little girl, but uh, back in 1911, childhood was very short and uh, not at all what, what we experienced. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to you about this book today because it's set in the Lower East Side in 1911 at the time that Henry Street was operating. Henry Street was founded in 1893 and was founded by Lillian Wald, who is right behind me on the wall here. Um, we can talk a little bit about Lillian Wald as we go. But 1911, Henry Street would have been in full operation and Lillian Wald was living here in this building where I am and living here with a team of nurses who were circulating the Lower East Side, serving uh, families like the Taglias in this book. So can you start us off by giving us just a little bit of information about the book? So tell us about sure. the main characters, about the family, and a little bit about the neighborhood in the time that it's set. Great. Yes, uh, the Taglia family were um, living in the Lower East Side on Mott Street. Back then, that area was Little Italy. And um, so a lot of Italians and, um, and Italy at the time had just been united uh, from all their territories for about 50 years. So it, it was very common for, you know, you say that you're Italian, but you're Sicilian or Calabrese, you know, or Roman. Um, so everybody had their ethnic and dialect. Um, my, my Lily's family, they, they came from Sicily, the parents, and the oldest sister. The four other sisters were born in America. So they were American children, first generation. And um, living in the Lower East Side as a child, uh, you know, there were a lot of um, dangers and uh, obstacles. Uh, the children were constantly um, navigating bullies and prejudices. And yet they had an semblance of a childhood. Uh, they, they found a way to play games. And in, the, in this book, um, it was about baseball, playing in the streets. And they played uh, stickball with their mother's broom handles <laughs> and the penny and the penny spalding uh, ball. And um, what I found, uh, a lot of my stories were coming from uh, true stories that my grandmother and her sisters told growing up. Uh, in the Lower East Side. My, my grandmother was the oldest sister and she was born in Sicily, but she had four other sisters. And they, um, they were in the Lower East Side for at least 15 or 16 years, uh, you know, working, uh, going. Uh, my grandmother uh, was pulled from school before she was 13 years old to work in the factories. All, everyone did needlework at home, piecework. Uh, it was always trying to accumulate whatever they could in order to move on and attain their American dream, which was a home of their own and a patch of land. Um, but, uh, you know, children, children um, 
you know, were, were mixed in the neighborhood. There were Jewish children, uh, Romanian, even uh, Arab children in the neighborhoods at that time. And um, hygiene was, was not good. <laughs> it was disease usually robbed children of their lives very quickly. And um, they also had, uh, you know, a high mortality rate for the babies. And Lillian Wald and her public health uh, programs was a lifesaver. She, um, she, uh, badge, I would imagine she would have to have had to badger the board of ed to, um, to get a, a nurse in the schools to screen the children. She, um, she had them uh, give the children milk and, and uh, free lunches sometimes you know th that's all they had um you know so she was really such a service and it, it seemed like a lot for the um servicing women in the area you know with childbirth health of their children keeping their families healthy nutrition all that um so um although my my grandmother and her sisters don't really have stories about a nurse coming in uh, I think they had reaped the benefits of uh, Lillian Wald's presence and, and the Henry Street settlement um, between, yeah. between the meetings they had for labor unions. Labor was a big issue back then. Um, the women's suffrage movement, which um, later on my grandmother and her sisters were shop stewards in, in the factories they worked, you know, being able to bargain uh, with, with the big boss man and um, being able to communicate with, with the other workers. So um, it's, a fascinating yeah. Time. Yeah, it's a fascinating time because we really don't get a chance uh, to really study that time, you know, especially in the schools, you know, we have the civil war and industrial revolution, and then there's World War I. But so much had um, come about in politics in people's perceptions of, all these millions of people that came in poor, uneducated, um, and people like Lillian, Lillian Mould believe that, you know, being poor uh, was not a choice. They, they needed help to be able to uplift in order for these people to become good citizens, good American citizens. And, uh, you know, so that, you, that, you mentioned that, in, um, in relation to the main character of the book, Lily Taglia, you know, she's living on Mott Street and she has trials as a 10 year old. And also it, you see, what I loved in this book too is that you see some of the joys of her life as well. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? So what are some of the, the trials that her family is facing? But then also, especially when she comes to Henry Street, she has some of her best times, so. Yes, yeah. Um, well, with Lily, she is, um, she, she wants to be a big kid, but she's, a child, she still likes to play and, uh, and, and a little impulsive and um, maybe talks too much for a girl. <laughs> but, uh, she uh, gets to um, go to Henry Street, mostly delivering the bread from the bakery, um, but learns that there are nurses here. And she is the one who ran uh, to Henry Street to um, get a nurse because her mother was having a horrible labor and the midwife was uh, getting the priest. So, um, so Lily ran to Henry Street to get a nurse. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, must have been very frightening. And back then, you know, the tenements are three tight little rooms with um, a very tight little kitchen and they all slept in the living room. and. Uh, you know, very crowded conditions, and they shared a toilet closet with four, with three other families. So, um, you know, it's navigating all that, all the traffic in the street. You know, the horses and motor cars were just coming in, coming in, um, and yet they they look for places to play. the The girls would play Patsy's Patsy, which was a, like a hopscotch game. On, on the street, on the on the sidewalks, the boys would find alleys to play soft, to play stickball. Um, I'd imagine they played tag games. 
running around the block, bumping into everybody, <laughs> you know, because kids have to run. Um, but it was so nice with uh, Lillian Wald's place. She had a, a, a sweet little play yard for the children to come to and where it was safe for them to play. And, and it was also a safe place for young mothers to come to and bring their babies and chat with other mothers and, um, and have, uh, you know, some support that way. I would imagine many women came alone and, uh, you know, didn't have their mothers helping them. But Lily also loved to sing and she was often, often distracted by the little med medleys in her head. And um, the, the settlement house did have a little music program. They had a little choir for the children. And um, so Lily has to find a way to be able to make the time uh, in an afternoon to, to uh, sing. And um, when, you know, her, her mother and father were not too keen about them really uh, being in a stranger's place and in a place that was different from what they knew. Yeah, so Lily would bring her little sister with her to Henry Street and her sister would play in the backyard playground and Lily would go to the choir practice, which right. took place in this dining room where I'm sitting yes. right now. Yeah, so, yeah. And, you know, the reason why I wanted to talk with you today is because I loved all of the connections to Henry Street Settlement. You had come to visit Henry Street mm -hmm. last year oh, around this yeah. time. And... You know, when you were telling me about the book, I figured it would be set in the Lower East Side in 1911 and would have mentions of Henry Street. But Henry Street plays such a central role in this story. And I, um, yeah, you mentioned before of Lily running to Henry Street to get a nurse to mm -hmm. take care of her mother who was having a hard childbirth. And that was so reminiscent of lots of stories of the oh, nurses yeah. in the neighborhood, but also you know, our founding story of Lillian Wald getting pulled away by a little girl from mm -hmm. the class that she was teaching and asked for help. And Lillian Wald went to this family's home and nursed the mother back to health. And mm -hmm. that was the whole start of Henry Street. It gave her this inspiration to provide free and affordable nursing care. So I loved all your connections to Henry Street. And you mentioned this a little bit already, but what inspired you to make Henry Street such a central part of the story and why, yeah, what, what are you inspired about, about Lillian Wald? Well, what was, um, what I was trying to, to show in the uh, books um, is that the first generation of uh, young Americans who came over, they, they really kind of had to balance between two worlds. Their parents were still holding on to old world traditions and their ways. And here they were in America with so many opportunities. You know, they could go to school. They could, uh, they have other cultures to, uh, to experience. And, um, and there's these big streets and so, so much was going on with inventions and in, uh, innovations that were happening at the time. So, um, so they really had to, to play a balancing act during that time. And a lot of these stories came from my grandmother and her sisters uh, talking about, you know, what, what they did. They had to sneak around because their mother wouldn't let them do so much. <laughs> and, but there were true dangers that, you know, the, the kidnapping scene was, uh, was a true thing that had happened. Um, and, and there's also documentation of other children being kidnapped for ransom. Uh, there's just, um, and I wanted a place that, uh, that was American yet respected the, the different cultures and values. And I think that's what made Henry Street Settlement so, so successful and, and so important even today. Um, is that there was so much respect for the music, the languages, the the art, the uh, the traditions that uh, were melting into this neighborhood, and and she, you know, a lot, you know, let let this happen, you know, they they went and they did uh, little concerts and 
uh, people come out with their accordions and sing and do their their folk dances from the old world, you know, to bring it all in and to make it comfortable and uh, valuable. So I, um, whereas the other settlement houses were all about, you know, learn language, learn this way, learn that way, and forget about what where you came from. Um, th there was more of an acceptance with Henry Street. And I think that's what made it so much more of a successful uh, settlement than, than the others had. Um, but uh, so I was so impressed by that. Very cool. Um, yeah, I was wondering, this will be my last question. Um, along those lines, you know, you did such a vast amount of research that you put into this book and, you know, Henry Street in 1911, the way you portrayed it is, you know, was so historically accurate and, and of course the neighborhood setting. And I was just wondering how you went, went about your research for this book. Well, fortunately, I don't live too far from New York City. So I, I could, you know, take the train in and, and I got to see, although I think I drove and had a hard time finding a parking spot. <laughs> but I could get into the city. I walked the streets. I, you know, made an appointment with you to to visit Henry Street, and there I'm asking you, well, where do you think the kitchen was? Was there a back door? You know, how did the, you know, so you you were very kind and show me how things uh, could have flowed through traffic, and uh, where the other nurses had lived, and um, uh, in the building, and uh, you know, so I physically went there. I took a walk from one one twenty five Mott Street through the park. To, to Henry Street to see if this would really be a way for the kids to run through and uh, and and get there. And then I discovered the public library is right there <laughs> uh, in the park. So I had to put that in. And um, so between Henry Street Settlement and the Tenement Museum, I, I actually got some, I, I actually got my hands in there and 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 got to visit. I did try to, um, I walked up and down some of the streets looking for those uh, basement sidewalk doors because uh, there is a, there are scenes where the children go to the bakery through the cellar. And um, I wanted to see how many steps and can I get down there and uh, they wouldn't let me. So, so I had to rely on my father telling me what it was like when his father had a shop. But um you know, so I, you know, as a writer, I, I really wanted to get the feel of it. So a combination of reading and actually going to places and putting yourself in the environment, and then also family yeah. stories. Yeah, and then letting my imagination go nuts. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, as I said before, I thoroughly enjoyed this book, and I, I really recommend it to anyone, even though it is a young adult book. And I also recommend that if anyone listening would like to pair this book with a visit to Henry Street or Henry Street's exhibit, mm -hmm. that is great as well. Of course, we're going through this COVID surge again and um, our exhibit is still open. You can come in um, as an individual or in a very small group right now. We're not doing big group tours, but do encourage you to visit and you can find out information on our website at henrystreet.org. And um, I encourage you all to buy this book, especially from local neighborhood bookstores. Mm -hmm. One that I know that carries it is McNally Jackson, which is close by, and also Blue Stockings, which I, I also work there. So um, buy from your local neighborhood bookstore. And I'm wondering how can people continue to engage with you, Antoinette? How can they find you? Where can they get updates? Well, I'm on uh, Facebook, Antoinette Trulio Martin, uh, 2017, I believe. But you know, search for Antoinette Martin. Uh, and I am, uh, you can also uh, check my website, storyserved.com. And I blog and put in updates uh, for the books. Uh, the third one comes out, I hope. I got to finish, I got to finish writing, get started writing really. <laughs> On the third one, it'll be the final, uh, final story in this series. 
And oh, unless you were writing another one, it's it's the same same family that you're same family. Yeah, it's going to end the year. It's going to end the year with Christmas. So be a Christmas story. And it turns out in 1911, spoiler alert, Thomas Edison lit the first Christmas tree in Central Park. Wow. <laughs> so, Excellent. We got to tie and that in somehow. <laughs> I think that that'll be out sometime. Um, by the end of the year or not? Yeah, next short? fall. Yeah, before the holidays. So, so that'd be good. But uh, yes, thank you. But check thank my, you my website. With you. So you get the best. Okay, let's see. It looks like we have a few questions. I'm going to see if I'm Oh, able great. To Very good. Um, I don't know where I can find those. Do you want to help me? Yeah, so the question from the IP was, why is it called a settlement and where there are Okay, so one of the, I'm getting some help from my colleague with questions. Um, one of the questions was, um, why is it called a settlement and were there other settlements? So I'm happy to yes. jump in and answer as well, but I can start with the first part of the question um, that it, the term settlement comes from the idea of the people who were working in these settlement houses like Lillian Wald actually settling into the neighborhood and becoming part of the community and being neighbors with the people that they're serving. So that's where that term comes from. And these were founded at a time when there was really no kind of government safety nets or government help. So these settlement houses were providing essential services, especially for all the new immigrants who were coming to the city, but for all communities. And um, there were tons of other settlement houses right here in the neighborhood and across the country. It was really a whole movement. Yes. And um, Antoinette mentioned earlier that, you know, um, of thinking about like kind of the differences of Henry Street and other settlement houses and how Lillian Wald really didn't push Americanization as the ultimate goal and really embraced um, immigrants' cultures. And that that was something that was unique about Henry Street. Mm -hmm. Very unique. Okay, let's see. Do we have another question? This is the last one. So is this a series and what's the target age group and if will these characters based on real person? Okay, a couple of questions for you, Antoinette. Okay. Um, can you talk about this as I know it is a series, so can you talk about um, you know it's it's gonna be a three book series? And then also what is the targeted age group for this book? And the last question um, for you was um, is Lily based on a real person? Okay. Well, I'll first start that the um, the Becoming America's Stories uh, series is going to be a three book series. The first one is The Heart of Bakers and Artists. It was originally titled Daily Bread, but we were having a tough time with the uh, analytics. It's a math thing. I don't I don't know how that works. So, so this was book one, some nice awards. Uh, book two is The Dreams of Singers and Sluggers. And um, this is the one that, that features the settlement house. Uh, and book three will come out in uh, at the end of this year. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember that. I think the question was about target age group. Oh, yes. Uh, this is... Uh, the the language and the um, the readability is is set for fifth through uh, ninth grade middle grade uh, novel. Um, so, but I, I find that I got a lot of adults that just <laughs> uh, can't put it down. So that's good too. Um, it's also uh, it's a great read aloud. I have a couple of teachers who are using it to just read aloud uh, in their read aloud time of the day, you know, for the upper elementary school children. So, um, so it's a good book study. And then our last question was, is Lily based on a real person? Lily is a composite of uh, people uh, from my family. Um, I kept the names of my grandmother and her sisters. Uh, Lily was one name uh, that was Americanized. Her, her real name was Laboria. Uh, and they all, you know, I always knew her as Aunt Lily. But um, the, uh, the music 
and the fun-loving uh, type of personality she is, is are taken from other aunts and another grandmother. You know, so I, I kind of mixed her up a little bit. And, uh, and my mom also had some stories of, uh, of her friends and, uh, and cousins that, that, she, uh, that I've incorporated in. So that, that's the fun thing about doing historical fiction, because it is fiction. I, I, I get to make up <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I think that was all of our questions. Okay, that's thank great. Thank you, audience, for your questions. And thank, thank you, you, Antoinette, for your time. Oh, and this was wonderful. Thank you, Katie. And for this beautiful book. So I really encourage everyone to read it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.